How are you guys doing today? It's been a couple days, sorry um, we've been busy around here, but I wanted to talk today about the future or what my thoughts are on the future of the helicopter. Um, there's a lot of people that are um, spreading all kinds of things around the internet or just different thoughts or feelings about um, our helicopter is going to become obsolete over the next few years. Um, our helicopter job is going to go away because we're going to be replaced with autonomous helicopters that fly themselves and things like that. Uh, drones, that's a big topic. And then the, the new one is sort of the um, urban city transfer uh, vehicles. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about those different things today and my opinions on them and what the future is of the helicopter. Um, so just going back to kind of the beginning of helicopters, they're actually a very new thing as far as uh, history is concerned. Um, as you guys know, you know, flight took off back in the, the 20s and 30s. Um, helicopters got kind of started developing in the 40s and 50s. And what's interesting about the helicopter industry as a whole is the, the certification process for a helicopter is very uh, intense and so um, there's a lot of money and time and everything involved in that and so um, engine manufacturers and um, aircraft manufacturers they design an aircraft they, they put a type certificate together to design an aircraft and for the most part that aircraft typically doesn't get redesigned for many 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 years because the process to, to redesign that helicopter is very laborious very expensive and it's very time consuming and so what you find is you have helicopters like the jet ranger for example that was designed back in the uh, the early uh 60s or back in the 50s i think 58 or something like that um and so they, they were designed many, many years ago with an engine that was designed many years ago as well, like the Lycoming engines and so forth. And, uh, and they don't get redesigned for many, many years, 50 or 60 years. And I think that there's been a, a shift slowly since I got into helicopters. When I first got into helicopters um, 16 years ago now, um, I think we were just at the very, very beginning stages of there being a gentle shift in the helicopter industry where uh, more newer models of helicopters were starting to come out. Um, up until then, they would do slight variations to the same model of helicopter. If you took A-Star for example, um, the, the, um, back then it was uh, Eurocopter, uh, the H125 now, and they basically had you know, reiterations of the same helicopter. You started with a, a B and then a BA, and uh, then a B, sorry, a BA, then a B, um, then a B2, and then they came out with the B3, and then the B3E. Um, so you have a, a modifications of the same helicopter, basically for the most part the same airframe, and uh, they would just make modifications to different engines, adding to some different parts, different gearbox, Boxes and things like that and essentially you're taking the same helicopter same type certificate and then you're um, re making reiterations of it okay um, they did something similar with the the jet ranger they had the jet ranger then the long ranger and then they kind of had the long ranger and then they um, developed that into the bell 407 um, you know so you get this all through the helicopter industry uh, the schweitzer had the same thing we had the cb model well originally there was a b model then i believe a c model and um, and then a cb model and then the cbi was the kind of the fuel injected the most modern version of it but essentially you still have the same helicopter and you're just making minor little tweaks to it um, and that again is because of the certification process and everything how expensive it is and how hard it is um, to make those changes so that all being said, um, I think in the last sort of 10 years, we're starting to see this slow shift where there's been some innovations with, with some companies and, and you're getting newer developed helicopters, like the Gimbal, for example, um, the Cabri G2, which is you know new since 2008 and uh, it was certified back then. So in the last 12 years, it's, it's come to market and it's been, um, Probably one of the bigger game-changing helicopters, um, as far as you know, modern avionics and those kind of things go, for a small um, light piston helicopter. All right. Now, obviously, when you're getting into the bigger helicopters, sort of the mid-size helicopters, there's been, I think, more innovation going on with um, Eurocopter, which is now Airbus, and. Um, you know, you're, you're seeing some newer models coming out and so forth um, that have more innovation and things like that to it. Now, where do we see the, the future of helicopters going? Um, the, the idea of drones taking over, um, I think autonomous vehicles in general 
on the road, first of all, we're still a few ways, uh, a few years away from seeing that become a reality. So like a Tesla or something um, being fully autonomous, no driver behind it and, and driving through the city and stuff like that on its own. We're still a little bit away from that. Away from that, I know that there's lots of buzz about that right now, and that that's coming very quickly. But you, you don't, you can, not even allowed to have a Tesla right now um, that is uh, fully able to drive itself um, without you know the driver doing anything. You have to put little inputs into it so that it knows the driver's there and actually awake right now. So. Um, for, the, for you to be able to take the driver straight out of that vehicle and just have that vehicle driving around, it's a little ways away. Now, aviation is always a bit behind that, so to have a, um, an aircraft up in the sky over top of an urban city um, and then to not have a, a pilot behind that, that aircraft, I think that's a big leap at this point, okay? Now, we're talking about things like um, Bell is coming out with the Nexus. Uh, they're developing uh, what they're calling the Nexus. Um, and Airbus has its equivalent, which they've done some test flying on already, uh, which is called the City Bus. And, uh, and basically what these are is they haven't fully developed exactly what it's gonna be like, but they have some um, prototypes that they're showing people at uh, different shows and things like that. And, um, and it's typically a quadcopter, basically is what we're seeing. There's dozens of others, by the way, this is an incredible field right now. There's dozens of other um, competitors that are all working in the same space that are trying to create this um, city air mobility vehicle that's gonna be able to m move people uh, very quickly from rooftop to rooftop from the, the center, the dense center of a city to the outskirts and vice versa so people could commute with these things um, and make it relatively affordable. Um, so the, the designs that we're seeing right now are these kind of body structures, these airframe structures that will have maybe six or eight people in them and, uh, and then these really giant fans, typically four of them, um, that are going to allow this vehicle to go vertical, they call it an e uh, VTOL, so electric uh, vertical takeoff and landing uh, vehicle. And so you're going to be able to vertically take off like a helicopter and they're going to pivot forward and then they're going to fly like an airplane, okay? There is an incredible amount of money funding these projects right now, from the uh, millions to sometimes hundreds of millions, and I've even heard up into the billions um, of investment dollars that are going into these startup projects. Um, some with companies that are very uh, long-standing, like Bell and Airbus, and and then some that are just absolutely brand new startups. Now. I was reading an article about this uh, the other day and it was a very interesting article because it seems like the way that the press is bringing this out that this is a very imminent future. In the next few years um, we're going to see these, um, these air vehicles cruising around our cities and, and going rooftop to rooftop and things like that. I don't know that it's going to be quite that fast. Okay guys, here's, here's the reality of it. Most of these that they're talking about right now um, are going to be electric vehicles. Okay. The battery life, they're, they're saying, hey, this is a very obtainable thing in the very near future because um, most of the flights that we're going to have to do are between like 6 and 12 minutes. And so we have batteries right now that are going to be allowing us to be able to do, you know, 12 to 18 minute flights kind of thing, okay? Unfortunately, there's a, a really big issue with that. There's two issues with these vehicles, okay? One is aerodynamically, they don't make a lot of sense, okay? There is so much drag on this, this rotor system because it's these big, big induction fans um, and there's a really large surface area. There's a, a huge amount of drag being created by this. So um, they're not super efficient as far as um, speed goes, which if you're not going a very long distance is not as critical. But if you're trying to go a bit of a, a further distance, obviously speed is a factor. So these things are never going to fly very fast. Okay. Um, when we're talking about a, a well-built, um, really aerodynamic, dynamic a helicopter you know 130 140 knots is kind of the top end for them and um, and these things I don't know what the specs that they're actually putting out are but from what I understand with the drag and everything so far um, they're not going to be going very fast okay so that's a drawback for them the other thing is in the aviation industry you're required to have a fuel reserve or a I guess an electric um, battery reserve if you're going into an electric vehicle Right now, this, the industry standard is 20 minutes for daytime, 30 minutes for nighttime. Um, that's in Canada. I believe it's exactly the same in the US. Um, and Europe, I, I, I think, is the same, but maybe it's longer. And um, so 20 minutes, let's just use that for a day, daytime flight. That's the amount of reserve time that you need. So if you're going to have this one of these uh, um, eVTOL uh, aircraft, 
If you want the flight to be, let's say eight minutes or maybe 10 minutes, you need a 30 minute battery life. From my understanding, because these things are so incredibly inefficient, helicopters are in general uh, very inefficient, um, to get a 30 minute battery life out of one of these vehicles, we're still like maybe 10 to 15, maybe even 20 years away um, from seeing that. Realistically, from the article that I was reading, we're 15 to 20 years away uh, from having batteries that are gonna be capable of this kind of um, uh, range, okay? So where do I see the, the industry, where do I see helicopters going in this whole picture, in this big picture? Well. I don't see typical helicopters being replaced anytime soon. Um, probably not in my career. That's that's kind of what I'm seeing. Um, let's say you know I'm 34 now. Let's say I'm going to do this for another 20 years or something like that. Uh, 25 years. Um, we're probably not in my in my main career going to see a big shift um, to these types of vehicles. Uh, I, there's going to be an adoption period and then there's going to have to be technology that's going to actually have to keep up to it and and, and a full. Um, sort of industry adoption and acceptance of it, okay? Um, the other thing that I see is in general, as far as aircrafts are concerned, as far as helicopters are concerned, the conventional design of a helicopter is actually the most efficient or fairly close to the most efficient that you can get. The problem with them is um, a lot of the designs are very, very old. The, the structures and so forth are very old. And, um, and so you're not getting the same efficiency that you could in a brand new modern designed aircraft. Um, I think there's a lot of things that, that could be improved on um, that would increase speed and performance and all these kind of things. Um, all that being said, I think that there is, the industry is ripe and, and, and there is um, the opportunity for an incredible paradigm shift in um, in aviation, in helicopters in general. Um, I think we're working our way there. Um, I think there's gonna be some brilliant people um, out there that are gonna really have the ability to make a massive impact. The other thing that's interesting is um, economies of scale. So in general, helicopters are very expensive, and so it's, it's hard to sell a large amount of them, okay? A vehicle is a good example. Um, pretty much every single year, you're gonna come up with a new model of vehicle. Um, you know, you have a, a Jeep or a, a Ford es Escape or something like that, um, or a new pickup truck or whatever, a Chevy pickup truck or something. Um, you're gonna get a new model of that pretty much every year, sometimes every other year, and they're gonna make minor changes sometimes, and then every four or five years or something, they're gonna make a big change, and it's a totally new body style and everything, right? It's because of an economy of scale. They're gonna sell 10,000 or 100,000 or you know whatever um, of these vehicles, and so they have the the marketing budget, or not the marketing budget, the um, the design budget to be able to redesign this, air, uh, the, this vehicle and put it out to the public. Also, um, they don't have as stringent of um, of testing um, regulations. It's they, they're they're definitely stringent for a vehicle, but it's it's much easier and more cost effective to be doing these tests and so forth to get these new vehicles um, out there and certified. So Robinson was the last company I think that did make a paradigm shift in the helicopter industry. Um, there, there was definitely some big um, gaps in, in their design, I think, and um, but they did make a massive impact. They created a helicopter that was affordable to uh, a large amount of the, the population, a much larger amount of the population than ever before, and so I think that they were able to make a really big dent in the um, aviation sector and in the world in general um, for flight. I think there's so many people that could have never afforded flying before in a helicopter that now own Robinson R44s, for example, okay? I think we're ripe for something different. I think um, we're on the cusp of something new, something exciting, something that is a complete um, paradigm shift that's gonna change the way that people view aviation and view helicopters in general. I'm excited for it. I'm excited for the future. Um, I can't wait for that to happen. And um, so yeah, that's that's my thoughts on it in general. So if you're a helicopter pilot, um, that's the, or you're interested in helicopters um, and getting into to being a pilot. I think the the future is bright. I think um, there's a lot of years for us still to fly helicopters. They're finding um, 
new things, innovative things to do with helicopters on a regular basis. So yeah, even though we're gonna shift in the next 15 years or so um, to something that's new, I think that's a segment, a sector of um, what currently is being used, uh, helicopters are being used for, that's gonna be maybe a new design but there's going to be so many other things that conventional helicopters are still going to be doing, the things that people are still coming up with right now. And as they're being redesigned and they're more desirable and um, they're more cost effective, I think there's going to be even a bigger industry for that, a bigger um, market for that. So those are my thoughts on that. Are helicopters going away anytime soon? I think the answer is no. And I think that the, um, the market and the industry is ripe for um, something new, something fresh, a big change, and I'm excited for it. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, until next time, uh, actually in the meantime, why don't you guys leave some comments below what your thoughts are on this. Um, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. If you guys have um, any insight into different um, things that are coming, let let me know about that down below and um, in general I just would love to hear you guys' thoughts on this topic and uh, please if you haven't subscribed already do so it's so easy to do hit the notifications bell so you guys know when my new videos are being posted and we're gonna talk to you guys on the next one see ya